that have some principles that go deeper than the current era, than the current age, than the time in which we live. You gotta, you gotta be willing to, to submit yourself to some principles where you won't sign the banana and be one of the bunch, where you won't go along to get along, where you won't, where you won't get in where you can fit in, but you'll stand out where you stand out. year ago I made a video about the original Lumix S5 which has been my main camera for a pretty long time now and honestly one of my favorite cameras ever it's gotten me through the last year some of my biggest projects I've made with the Lumix S5 the original and it's pretty much been everything that I was looking for from Lumix from Panasonic I went from the GH5 to the S5 I remember the reason I made the switch from the GH5 to the original Lumix S5 is because I was looking for vlog and I was looking for a full frame camera just because the GH5 wasn't really up to par when I was doing videos on social media and doing Instagram reels which I dived into pretty decently during the beginning of this year um, but I've kind of simmered down lately but a few months ago I think two months ago or so I ended up picking up the Lumix S5 II the Mark II and I wanted to do a quick little review or at least my version of a review mostly just my thoughts on the camera since I've picked it up I've taken it out on a few different shoots nothing crazy um, not as much as I have in terms of shoots in the past but I've made my own content in terms of an Instagram reel and I brought it out on a few professional shoots with me so I want to just give you guys my thoughts on the Lumix S5 II the second it came out the second people started getting it early the second people started making videos about it I knew that I wanted to get my hands on it you know the face the tech autofocus all that good stuff I wanted to discuss that I wanted to get my hands on it and just kind of see what it was about so that's what I'm going to discuss in this video so let's dive right into my thoughts on the Lumix S5 II. Now, just in terms of the way the camera feels, it's pretty much identical to the original S5. The body is pretty much the same. The only thing visually that you're gonna see right away, or maybe not even right away, but if you take a look at it for long enough, you're gonna see that there's a fan on the S5 Mark II, and that's just to obviously keep the camera cool. Luckily, Panasonic, Lumix, they've never really had, at least to my knowledge, I'm not an expert, but they've never had problems with overheating that I'm aware of. So the S5, the original one was great, and the S5 Mark II has been pretty great. It just feels great in your hand. The camera, it has a bit more weight to it compared to the original S5, but it just feels great. Like the camera grip feels amazing. The camera isn't too big in my opinion. It's also not too small, so it just feels good when you're using it for handheld footage. It's just, it's a good looking camera too in my opinion. It just looks sleek, and I know there's the S5, Mark II X, I think, which is all black. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the X2, S5 Mark II X is all black in terms of like the logo or whatever, it's all blacked out. But it feels good. Button placement is in good spots. I mean, if you had the original S5, you pretty much can expect the same exact thing on the S5 Mark II. It's a solid camera body that you really can't go wrong with. One of the biggest benefits that I heard about before I picked up the S5 Mark II was the fact that it does shoot in 6K 10 bit. So, I mean, well, 6K open gate, it shoots in 6K open gate. So it's using the full sensor to record. And I've used this on my Instagram reel. I will put that up on the screen for you guys. I don't know if I'll put it up at the end or if I'll put it up right now, either way you'll find out, but it looks amazing. And I haven't made as much content with it just yet. I really should. Luckily, when I did test it out, cause I really wanted to know what it looked like on Instagram, especially because platforms like Instagram, like YouTube shorts, they have, um compression and you know when you get it up on the internet when you get up on their platform it doesn't look as good as it does when you have it on your you know computer the raw file or when you're editing and that used to really frustrate me when i would get up you know i'd edit these videos and i thought they would look really sharp and then they get on instagram and they look soft um and part of that also was because i was shooting manual and i've shot manual for years but we'll get into that later but putting uh, you know the footage on the screen when you guys get to see it but that being said you can expect sharp nice images coming from the s5 II. honestly this camera has some of the best footage in my opinion 
just out there in general. The reel I made, I was just blown away how it looked on Instagram. Even the compression couldn't make this thing look soft. It looks absolutely amazing. So if you're worried about sharpness, if you're worried about like a lot of detail, I mean, the, the ability to shoot in 6K open gate in general is amazing, but you don't have to worry about this camera putting out soft images or picture quality that is not up to par with today's standards. Most clients are not even gonna need 6K. That is just mostly like a creator thing or something that's just great to have. So uh, definitely dope in that regard. It is just, it's just great. And I can't wait to use it more. Also just the price point of the camera in general, I sold my original S5 on eBay, I think for like 800 bucks, then eBay takes a cut, so it was like 750. But I put that towards the S5 II and it came out to like 13, 1400 um, after taxes and everything like that. But the S5 II markets for like $2,000. You get a bunch of cinematography benefits inside of the S5 Mark II that most cameras don't have. Like I don't think a lot of Sony cameras have what Lumix tends to come pre-packaged with inside their cameras. Like you get histogram, you get waveform, you get zebras, you get focus peaking. Um, and there's a bunch of other settings that I'm probably not even remembering right now that just comes pre-packaged inside of the S5 Mark II and other Lumix cameras in general. And honestly, that's why I've loved Lumix pretty much. I've used them since I began my journey in filmmaking and cinematography is because they have so many settings inside of the camera itself that just makes it so accessible. And yes, you can use an external monitor, say on like a Sony or whatever, but I just love having that just in case I wanna shoot like run and gun. Like I shoot run and gun a lot of the time and just being able to just have all those settings pre-packaged in the camera is really, really dope. I know exactly what my exposure is looking like. I know exactly what is in focus. It just makes my life easier while I'm shooting. That way I'm not finding these things out later in post-production and just giving myself a headache for no reason. You know what I mean? Another thing about the Mark II, which once again, a lot of these things are just staples for Lumix in general at this point. They've managed to nail these things down. Um, the button placement, like I mentioned, is always great. The button placement's great on this camera, but also not just the button placement, but the, the menu system in the Mark II, same thing as the original S5, it's great. You have everything that you need very neatly organized from top to bottom. You can run through. Put me going through the menus on the screen just because I can't off the top of my head you know, run off every setting in every, you know, menu screen. But I actually think it's very user friendly to new people to the ecosystem. I think if it's your first time using the S5 Mark II or any Lumix camera, uh, at least the newer ones, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I've had the GH5, it's pretty similar. So it's been similar for years now. But if you're new to the Lumix ecosystem, it's just super user friendly. I think by the end of the day, if you just sit there going through the menus, you can pretty much know what you need to find, where it is and all that. So that's what I love about it. I mean, this camera is one of the highest quality for the price point, man, $2,000 and you're getting all this. Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, I've been using Lumix for so long, it's it feels like home. I love the ecosystem. So uh, even if I was new to it, which I was a few years ago, I didn't find it very hard to navigate the menu. So if you are looking and you're interested in picking up the S5 Mark II, um, it's not gonna be that hard to navigate the menus. The Mark II is what the original S5 should have been. This is honestly the camera that I've been waiting for Lumix to come out with for like four years now, ever since I picked up the GH4, which was my first camera, uh, the GH5, and then the original S5. I've been looking for this camera just because it truly feels like it has everything I need. Moving on to phase detect autofocus, which I know is what a lot of you guys wanna hear about. And I, I understand why, I definitely understand why people make it a big point and a big deal in the Lumix ecosystem to, you know, talk about the autofocus. I think people blow it out of proportion, truthfully. Um, I know, especially with YouTube and vlogging or whatever, that people love to have autofocus. And trust me, I experienced moments where I wish I had autofocus back when I was using the GH5 as my main, back when I was using the original S5 as my main. but. I got by, you know, I use manual focus. I think it's important for everyone to even know how to use manual focus truthfully. But that being said, face detect autofocus is great, man. Like coming from using manual focus for four years now, straight, no autofocus really, cause it was pretty bad on the other cameras. I feel like I'm doing nothing. I feel like the work is being done for me. I'm sure, you know, Sony and Canon 
probably still blow the S5 II out of the water, but like for what I need to do, it locks on pretty quick. I mean, even now I'll try to demonstrate in front of you guys with just some objects I'll put in front of the screen. Shooting this video in particular, I have it on human detection, um, one point. And I feel like that for me has been the setting that works the best for me. You have zone, you have tracking, you have pinpoint autofocus, and I think you have full area autofocus or full screen autofocus. And those are all the settings. I haven't, I don't think I've used full screen or full area autofocus, and I don't think I've used pinpoint really. So I'm not gonna, this is not gonna be some super in depth review about the autofocus. But what I can say is from what I've used with one area or one point autofocus with human detection on, it's been pretty reliable. I don't think that there's ever been an area where I was out on the shoot and I really felt like I needed to grab a shot and the autofocus failed me. And for me personally, that's all I wanted. I wanted to be able to show up with my S5, you know, back when I was using the original and just know that the autofocus could get the job done and I don't have to be sitting there worrying about whether or not it's in focus. And since I was in manual, you know, I had the rack focus, which made me really good, which is why I use focus peaking. Even with autofocus, I think you should be using focus peaking. Personally, it just makes the life so much easier that way you know what's in focus, but the autofocus to me is very solid. If I have examples, I'll put it up on the screen. Another area I want to touch on, you have a few different options on the dial. I'll show you guys all the options on the dial. There's three points for custom settings. So pretty much map and create custom layouts for when you're on shoots and you just want to have, you know, quick settings ready to go. On the original S5, what I would do is I would have an option that shot in 60 FPS, one that shot in 30, and I would map that to like C1 or C2 or C3. So that's what that is for on the dial. You have photo mode, you have manual mode. I usually use manual mode when I'm taking photos. I shoot in raw. One of the things I haven't had a crazy amount of time with is the low light performance, but with the original S5, I honestly didn't run into many problems with low light. I feel like if you get a fast lens, that'll take care of most of your problems. It's not gonna be, you know, a Sony a7 III in low light or any sort of Sony camera in low light, but I think it puts up a pretty damn good fight. Um, it is a dual native ISO, so I believe if it's the same thing as the original S5, I haven't looked on this one, 640 should be native and then 4000 should be the second native ISO. So, hey man, like whenever I shot in 4000, it was good. Whenever I shot in 640, it worked out. So in terms of low light performance, like I said, I haven't tested out too much but I think it should be fine. In terms of stabilization, you know, Lumix has been pretty damn good with stabilization the last few years and just in general, I think they're pretty much known for that at this point. Um, I love the camera body, like I mentioned earlier, cause it's good for handheld footage. The stabilization is gonna do what it needs you to do. Stabilization is gonna get the job done, truthfully. You can definitely use this thing as a running gun, handheld camera. The stabilization is workable. It's not super shaky and jittery. And you know, when you get it in post and use stabilization in Premiere or in DaVinci, like what I use, it's not gonna mess it up. As long as you, you know, do what you need to do on your end where you're duck walking or you're walking slowly and just keeping the camera steady, the stabilization won't fail you. And I don't think I need to go crazy in depth with that. I'll show the menus, you know, when I'm going through the menus, but just know it's gonna be very reliable for stabilization. And then apart from that, color profiles, I personally only use two color profiles, even though this thing has a bunch and there's some that I don't even know what they do that weren't there on the original S5. I've gone through it. I'll show you guys on the screen the additional color profiles, but I use Vlog and I use Cine D. And with the original S5, Cine D worked really great. Some of my best footage came from Cine D. Cine D on the S5 Mark II is really good as well. And Vlog, which I shot in vlog when I made that reel that I put up on the screen. So in terms of the color profiles, man, this thing delivers and the color straight out of camera, especially when you're shooting in city D is just great. Like, honestly, I don't even think you need to shoot in vlog. It looks so good, but I, you know, to have the option, the dynamic range and all that, if you're good at grading, definitely use vlog It's going to work. Uh, and there's a lot of good options. Game has some good options for conversion LUTs and, you know, boost LUTs and other stuff like that. I don't know if it's called boost. I think there's there's a lot called gamut boost, which is what I'm thinking about. But um, yeah, man, I, I, that's really about it. I want to go super, super in depth. I think this ran a bit long. The S5 Mark II is one of my favorite cameras ever, even though I haven't even brought it up on a crazy amount of shoots, but just coming from the S5, I knew what I was dealing with. And then having the option to use autofocus, it's just, it's, it's perfect. It's exactly what I need. And for most people, I think for most people, if you're not doing this professionally, it's overkill. So if you're thinking about getting the S5 Mark II, definitely pick it up. 
I'm shooting this very video with the S5 Mark II, and that's really about it, guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like on it. It's been a while since I made a video. I'm glad to be making content again. Very solid camera. It does everything that I need it to do. So if you're new to my channel, please hit subscribe. If you want to have more videos like this, just put it down in the comments so I know that you guys enjoy stuff like this. I have a great video coming soon in terms of storytelling. It's the belief video I've been talking about pretty much this whole year, and I really want to get that done and wrap that up. So if you guys love storytelling, like long form storytelling this channel is for you cinematography tips like there's a lot of things i want to bring to the forefront just hit subscribe be along for that ride there i appreciate it guys my name is jason morrison of jam studios and i'll see you guys in the next video deuces